conversation got to the pride of membership program which includes the following but specifically as it relates to today all of the ball marks that people are seeing on the greens they're really really dis somewhere between disappointed and angry that people aren't following the directives that we go through every time we talk about the pride of membership program as you look behind me courtney and i put golf balls out on ball marks either they are old ball marks and not fixed properly or they are new ball marks, and, and we put them on the right side of the green because this is where your whole location is today. How about this? So I don't know how many balls are out here, and we probably didn't yeah, get all the marks, but we want to show you and be emphatic about the fact that we need to do a better job of fixing our ball marks. It's really, really disrespectful, and I keep using that word over and over again to other players, and you wouldn't see this in a tour event, so we're asking, we're not asking for your help. We're telling you that this is going to be a mandate. We're going to keep looking at these greens. And if we see that people are not fixing them and we can see that they've made a ball mark, we're going to approach these people and say, what is it with you with your lack of support for this Pride of Membership program? The other thing too is I played with some gals yesterday, which was a lot of fun and, and good for me. And we were playing from the please this is what the player had to do the player had to jump over that rake walk down here they got in here they hit their shot they walked back out jumped over the rake again I mean how is this agreeing to the program so now somebody else is going to be disappointed if their ball comes to rest in you know my footprints in this case and then we got to rake it again and it slows up play I mean these are considered unacceptable as we move forward. You see that I'm pushing the sand and you see how smooth it is as we rake our way out of the bunker. What we don't want to do is this, right? And that's exaggerated, mind you, but still, we don't want to pull, we want to push. And it takes two, two pushes and we're good to go. And we rake our way out of the bunker. Okay, folks, here we are back at the scene of the crime. We're here on the 13th tee, and obviously if you're going to break a tee, this would be the tee you typically break one on. And so I should tell you that in this blue tee area alone, this is how many tees were stuck in the ground. The only thing that was showing was the head, and that's unacceptable. And then we come over here to the infamous baskets that were supposed to be courteous and throw the broken tees in, and some tees are around there. I mean, it looks like a basketball hoop and nobody can make a shot. So, you know, we need to do a better job of pulling the old tees out of the ground. If you don't want it, throw it in the basket. But we need to have these tees be as clean as we possibly can have them. And this is all part of the respect program that we're talking about. We'll get back to you a little bit later with some other topics. One of our topics, as we talk about the Pride of Membership program, is filling our divots. And the divots, be it on the tee box or in the fairways or wherever they might be. So this is on every cart. And so it's sand with seed. And what we're asking you to do, look at this guy right here. This is completely fresh. So we need to take sand and seed, put, fill the entire divot, but no more. We don't want this all over the place. Press it down with your foot to make it flat. And maybe just walk around. Look at this thing. This is a crater, for goodness sakes. So we've just got to do a better job of doing what we can as golfers to make this the best playing surface possible. And so these are on the carts. You're welcome, encouraged, and we're almost mandating that you use these to fill your divots. Okay, here. All right, folks, you might think that this video is kind of choppy today, and it is because we're going around to different parts of the golf course and talk to you about what's happening, what might happen. So I want you to take a look at this picture here, Courtney, in between the, uh, the concrete curbs here, and this is what they call a, um, a tea line, and it's synthetic grass. And we have talked to what will be three companies, probably four, just to check to see what it would take, how much it would cost, how much it would cost to get a tea line on the back end of this tea, and why would we do this? Well, as you can see, that I would just tell you some stats on any given day this time of year, we might have 220 people hit balls on this end of the tee 
and then we might have another 10 on the back end. So as you can see, it gets beat up pretty quickly. And this might give us a little bit of relief when we need it. And when we need it, mostly it was when we have to go through the uh, time of year when we're seeing frost delays. So rather than tell you, yes, we've got a frost delay, we're not gonna be able to open till 11 o'clock, the range will open at 10.30, we can now say that because it's synthetic, we can open up this synthetic tea at, heck, I don't know, eight o'clock in the morning so that people can get warmed up and not have to sit in the clubhouse, et cetera, et cetera. So we are looking for different things. And you know, some have asked us, you know, tell us, tell us a little bit about what happens when my cart stops when I get too close to the green. So here's what I'd like to show you. You can see these areas. This happens to be number one. And in the yellow, it's okay to pass through and get over to the cart path. Typically, these front edges are 20 yards from the green fronts, and you can see that the red in here, all the way around the bunkers and, and the outsides of the greens and, and the collars, you know, these are areas where your car is going to be stopped if you decide that you are going to beat the system and you're going to park wherever you want to park. So now you get stopped, you have to go in reverse, it goes about three miles an hour, and then once it, it resumes its typical speed, then we ask that you just head on over to the cart path. So every hole has got its own limitations as to how close to the greens you can get. Why do we do this? Because we want the fronts uh, nice and clean, good grass there. We don't want a bunch of tire tracks and you having to hit out of the tire tracks. So in any event, if you ever want to see a little more of this stuff, this is what we've got going. Off to the next place. We are again back on the range and I just was thinking and talking to Courtney, maybe some of you people don't know that these candy cane poles with the flags on top, they are GPS, every one of them. And we've got an app called AccuForum that you can get, it's no charge to you, but it gives you the distances from every pyramid to whatever flag you're shooting, both from south to north. And if you were to go to the back end of the range, take the switch and move it over to the right and then you would get your yardages from north to south and then on Sundays when you're playing the horseshoe which has now been rated by the USGA with slopes as well um, we would switch it over to the uh, to this toggle switch that would allow you to shoot to the greens on the horseshoe of which there are nine as many of you know and if you haven't played it you know, just come out on a Sunday afternoon and it takes probably three clubs and a little Sunday bag that we give you and you can have a blast and it probably takes an hour. And you can do it with your friends, you can do it with the kids, but that's why we built this. And I, and I would tell you something that's um, current. So we had a competition against Pinnacle Peaks Juniors and Aaron Baddeley, a PGA Tour player for many, many years and a multi-time winner out there, came up to me and he said, hey buddy, um, I've got my kids out here this afternoon. I've never been out here before looking at this, and this is absolutely wonderful to be able to have a nine-hole short course out here. And now you say it's rated and sloped. He said, this is just a wonderful thing. Could we do this at, at our club? You know, and I said, yeah, you can. Not every hole has to be this yardage. And the yardage of the hole nine is uh, 816 yards, which is over the 750 that the USJ requires to slope and rate a course. And this was the first one done in this area. So it's really pretty cool. It's pretty fun. I challenge the good players. Let's see how good you are. Come on out here and play it. And we'll have a little wager for you. It might be a Coke, but in any event, we want you to come out and have fun. Hey folks, the last we spoke to you was about the course rating of the horseshoe, which we're glad that we got that done, as well as the slope rating. Uh, as we move on, and we're doing this in segments as we go around the golf course and, and the practice area, a couple of events are coming up that we want to remind you of. Uh, we have this Shamrock Couples Tournament, which is sanctioned by the club on Sunday, March the 17th. It's a one o'clock shotgun, and that's after we've got a considerable amount of play in the morning, so we're going to be spinning the carts as fast as we possibly can. Please understand that uh, we have a finite number of carts. That cart number is about 70. And uh, if you just be patient, we're going to get everybody's bag on their cart, take a couple clubs, hit some balls, and we'll get you saddled up as soon as we can. Uh, we're looking forward to the Desert Diamond Classic. 
this coming week. It starts on Monday, March the 18th with a practice round. And then the competition rounds are the 19th, 20th, and 21st. We won't have any golf available for anyone on the 19th and 20th, but on the 21st when they're only playing nine holes, we do have golf available in the afternoon. Uh, I should be honest with you and tell you that the times as best I checked about 10 minutes ago are pretty well sold out, but should there be any openings, I'm sure if you just keep checking on four tees, you might find that you can grab a spot. The men's quick draw one day member guest is on Monday, March 25th with a 12:30 shotgun start. And uh, we are fully subscribed for that one too. Saturday, men's day, uh, is uh, in a few weeks now and it's two best balls of four net on March the 30th and 8:30 shotgun and there's plenty of space available and guys we really want to get these things filled up as best we possibly can so let's grab a team uh, let's join the field meet some new people if you can and and really enjoy the day the roundup men's member guest April the 18th through the 20th that is sold out once again, year after year after year. The Stampede, the second member guest, is May 2nd through the 4th. It as well is sold out, and we are using the match play format with five matches being played. So both of these should be good times for the men uh, entertaining their guests. Uh, next week, the practice area. The times, as you'll see in different spots around the club, show that on Monday, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, as the course is closed, a full day on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, with just uh, a half day on Thursday. The practice park on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday is open from 1 to 5. And then on Thursday, the practice park is open from 10 to 5 as well. So just keep that in mind when you're coming to the club. Let us know how we can help with that. A couple of other things that uh, current news and whatnot uh, the Handicap Committee had a, a very, very spirited meeting uh, just the other day, and a couple things came about. And you should be able to see all of the minutes coming out in the next couple days if they haven't come out already regarding handicaps. But a couple things caught my eye that really uh, speak to all the people who are playing golf here is the fact that you must post your scores on the date that you play your round. So please keep that in mind or else you will be getting notifications about the fact that supposedly you didn't post a score and we're gonna give you the benefit of the doubt and say that you did post a score but you posted it on the wrong, on the wrong day and date. So please let's clean that up. Um, casual play is an individual player's responsibility for posting those scores. For comp competitions around the club, the golf shop will be posting the scores uh, via our golf professionals. If you have any uh, questions, just please let them know. And the weekly games that we have uh, where we utilize Golf Genius, that should be posted by that software. So just keep in mind how you post your scores. Uh, we also have uh, something I really need some help with, we need some help with, and certainly our ace in the hole, Jerry Mahanke, uh needs some help with. We are privileged to once again get back in the rotation of hosting the men's U.S. Open local qualifier here, and that uh, local qualifier will be on Monday, May the 13th, and we really need some volunteers. We've had a lot of great volunteers in the past. You've had some fun doing it. It's only half a day. The tee times for that day are from 7.30 to 9.30, off of both 1 and 10, so uh, we get that going. 82 players will be out there. They'll probably be qualifying for maybe five positions. The scores over time have not been nearly as good as the players think that they should be. I think that uh, if we've hosted seven or eight of these in the past, the scores under par have been 15 or less. So we really put up a good fight uh, as these players are trying to go to the US Open next stage, which is the sectional, which I'm not sure where that is. Uh, but I do know this for a fact that Jerry Mahanke uh, would like you to send him a, a, a text or an email. And his email address is jerry, J-E-R-R-Y, at mahanke, M-A-H-A-N-K-E, dot com. And that's for helping out 
as we need you for Monday, May the 13th. So if you can please call Jerry or you can call me or text me or email me, uh, whatever you'd like, uh, we do need some help. We are also hosting the Folds of Honor charity event on May the 20th, which is also on Monday. And uh, we really would like you to participate. We can give you some information um, about the Folds of Honor, not only as a benefit organization, but um, how, you, how you can really, really contribute. So Folds of Honor, May the 20th. Um, also, just a couple dates in the future. The, rain, the practice area and the golf course, as has been the case for many, many years, starts to close on Mondays starting in May and continues through the overseeing period to reopen probably that fourth Monday in um, October. So please bear in mind that uh, the course and the practice range will be closed during those time periods. Um, all course verification will close all golf like we did last year. I believe the date is uh, the 5th of July. Don't hold my feet to the fire at the moment because it's kind of a moving target. And it closes for about two weeks. And as I typically say, uh, if you're planning on taking your family on a vacation, that would be the time to do that as we are going to verify everything out there, greens, tees, fairways, and roughs. And um, that appears to be a, a good date because the kids are contemplating going on a last time vacation before they start school in the balmy month of August. Uh, again, I'm going to ask you that if you've got any questions, comments, concerns, if you please email me or you're welcome to call me. And if topics have to do with the membership at large, I will make mention of them in my next video, which will be in a couple of weeks. So we've thrown a little bit at you today. We appreciate your time. Um, enjoy the rest of the day and the week, and hopefully you'll stay out of the rain, which we are doing right now. And that's why I'm talking to you from my office. Have a good day.